<laughs> Everybody, it is Addison Bell and and Kendall Williams with Free Spirit Talks today. Our lighting seems a little weird, but we're just going to work with it today. It's kind of a cloudy day. So today our topic is depths of desire. Yes, I love so, the word desire. I like what the word desire? desire. Do you have any desires? No, I have no desires, no desires. No, I have tons of desires. I think a happy and a fulfilling life is full of desires. I think if you don't have desires in your life, you really are, you're not living, you're dying. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. So um, a life is full of desires. Do you have any desires? No, I like to live just duty-based. Okay, I think that's the way to live. The duty. depths of duty. The depths, the depths of, of duty. duty and responsibility. So we're going to have a great conversation here. <laughs> Maybe argument. No. If you if it is depths of duty. No, I was just pulling out the other side of the, you know, because the word desire tends to make a lot of people nervous and yes. concerned and feels even sinful at the thought of the word of desire because we've been taught that desires are nothing more than this like negative spin on things that we you know it's it's more all on like self-centeredness yes. and and wanting all this stuff that could be you don't want to be selfish and, but you don't want to be selfish no, I don't want to be self-centered. I use the word self-centered, not selfish. <laughs> How but, dare you be self-centered, though? Well, self-centered might be selfish. All right, we're going down a whole different. Yeah. Thing. Anyway, yeah. desire. So yeah, so the depths of desire. I'm gonna share us. Hold on. You, you keep talking. I'm gonna share us. Oh, um, oh okay. So oh, she's, she's marketing. Okay. I'm gonna. She's marketing. Share us <laughs> she's gonna really quick. Um. So, yeah, so the depths of desire, I mean, it really, when I think about the title that we've chosen here, it really is leaning into all of the depths, not just what we typically think desire is, because a lot of the times, I mean, I know that a lot of the people that I work with, if I ask them what they desire, they go, oh, and now a oh, lot no. of desire comes up. But the fear of expressing the desire, the feel of feeling the desire, like really allowing yourself to just step into it mm -hmm. and embrace it and feel it. There's so much shame and guilt and resistance around this because okay. we feel like it's something that we should not have or do, um, that we're almost a bad person, that we're going to step into this addictive nature. We're going to start wanting things that, you know, that we shouldn't want mm -hmm. or that we really can't have. Or I think a lot of people also get fear surrounding the fact that not only do they have desire, but a lot of times if you pull somebody else into your desire, like, oh, I want, you know, this vacation with this person, or I desire, you know, to try this out if you're in a romantic relationship. Or I mean, the, the desire to live one place and you might find that your, your partner doesn't want to be, doesn't really, there. you really like you know, the beach, but your partner wants the, wants the desert. Yes. So I think that sometimes people are afraid to own their desires because they feel like they're doing something wrong by even just having that desire, especially if it can potentially conflict with somebody else. So I yep. think that I notice a lot of my clients bringing that up. Well, I can't desire that because that's not their desire. Well, you can still own that desire. You can still have that desire without it necessarily having. You're you're not saying that that person has to have that same desire, but I'm you can still yeah. You can still have that desire. Um, it was actually so. I don't ever do. We don't ever really do any homework for these talks. We just kind of yeah. go off the cuff. But I just happened to be looking through. Um, I was organizing my journals. Um, <laughs> And this one, I was just okay. My, my bookshelf was a, a hot mess, <laughs> so I was just organizing shit and getting things in the same place. It wasn't super OCD, just a little bit, just a little bit. But because my desire is for order on my bookshelf, when you get done doing that, you can come to my house, okay? <laughs> but, but 
<laughs> my point being that I actually happened to open up a a journal thing that I was doing a lot of work in from I mean this was years ago this was definitely like years and years ago but I happened to have done a desire exercise and it was like I can read that and that my desires were so you know actually I think you know what I'm talking about they were so kind of surface level in the in the way of you know, I desire chocolate, I desire, you know, a good hug. But really, I wasn't digging deep into those desires because there was some fear there. I think we've all experienced fear surrounding our desires. But uh, once I was able, like looking through that journal and later on in, in that that particular book, it was funny because I had been able to really dig down deep and start to realize some of my true desires, some of the things that I really wanted in my life and wanted to pull into my life. And um, I actually have a... And it's not just coffee and chocolate? No, it's, it, it's coffee, it's chocolate, it's hugs. It's really good sex and connection and emotional intimacy and love. And it really is. That is when we get into the depths of desire. I think there's a lot of things we can say, oh, I desire that. And yes, there's a desire for it. But it's like, what is, what is at the root of these, these desires a lot of times? So like, say if you want chocolate, say like, if that is a desire, like I want a piece of chocolate. that Because I do believe that can be a desire. And it's a surface level desire, but it's still a desire. Uh, at the root of that could be like, I desire something, I desire to experience like something luxurious. I I desire some pleasure because chocolate brings pleasure. So that is when we're getting into like the depths of desire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, that's what I feel like. Um, it's important to not only just look at the surface level, but to also look at the underlying causes and vice versa. So for example, I have a, I had a client actually two weeks ago telling me like all of these like really deep desires, these desires that were really at the depth. However, he was actually ignoring, he was doing the reverse of what a lot of people do, ignoring the surface level and the like human Mm -hmm. kind of desires and really digging into those desires uh, and really allowing himself to explore some of the surface level stuff too because we are humans and we are not um, although we are spiritual beings at the same time we are living in these bodies and so our we have human desires too that we need to allow so yes Yes. 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 I mean, yes. And we do. We avoid, because you know, it, we, we're trying to, I think what you're hitting on there is that it, it kind of becomes that we're trying to be, you know, we have all these, we have human desires, as mm -hmm. you're, you know, physical desires. Yes. And that's really what it is, is the physical desires. But we try to mask our physical, physical desires by really focusing in on spiritual religious desires mm -hmm. you know it, it, this that, that trying to be reveal ourselves as being a good person so we only reveal those things and that's really being out of integrity with self and with with life with the people around us even it's with our spirits it, right. it does it's get not. us out of because we are then boxing ourselves off from certain things we 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 want and i actually so i lie i do get a little bit of homework on this one because i looked up <laughs> some quotes it took about two minutes. Um, but so like one of the quotes from the Bible from Psalms uh, 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And it is the truth. Like when we, we do praise, when we do kind of get into this. And when I it says like delight in the Lord. And when I think of that, when I hear that passage, what I hear is like in the beauty and the gratitude of life, it just like be in your life and, and kind of in a praiseworthy state. And then you will get the desires of your heart. You really will get what you're wanting. And that includes the physical, you know, body type desires too. I think you're correct. You're right on target where it's okay. We can have like these desires over here. Like it's okay to desire, you know, that our kids do well in school. It's okay to desire that, um, 
What are some other desires that, you know, it's to a lot of people, it is okay to desire that, you know, trip, but, uh, a lot of times it's no, we, we cut ourselves off from those more perceived sinful desires. Like orgasm, like orgasm, <laughs> which is, I mean, I, I always desire a good, good orgasm. And I'm not even talking in the bedroom. I'm talking like orgasmic relationships. I'm talking sensual touch, all of that. Mm -hmm. That's when, when I say I desire orgasm, that's what I'm desiring. And I mean, a good, like traditional orgasm doesn't hurt. (laughs) No, no. I mean, when you read that quote, you know, delight, delight in the Lord. And to me, when I hear, I don't know, Maybe it's just me or whatever, but it doesn't matter. I'm sharing. <laughs> That's what these talks are. Right? <laughs> but delight in the Lord really is to me more of a on that line of that our delight in our blessings is providing pleasure to God, the creator as well. Yes. And that is how that, that's that circuit that is happening there. So, you know, because God has manifested through all of us. In different mm-hmm. ways, right? We're all yes. children of God. We're made in God's image, all this different stuff. And it's so that we can experience a physical life. Mm-hmm. And for us to experience a physical life means that we have to embrace and receive different physical experiences, yes. which comes down to what do you desire? Mm-hmm. And those desires that come into us, you know, yeah, some of them are not healthy desires. There are lots of unhealthy desires out there. Such as <laughs> maybe wanting to kill your neighbor. That would be an unhealthy That's probably desire, not right? A healthy All right, desire. so right. Okay. You can then, not acknowledge it and then maybe like not go through it. Exactly. So all right, my neighbor's really upsetting me. But you know, we live in this world where where we have so many different things happening. We have high school shootings, we have you know, all these terrorist things going on. We have lots of rapes and murders and just lots of really, really bad things. So I can see like on the opposite side of this, you could have the argument of, yeah, well, those people desired to do that. So does that okay? What makes it okay? What doesn't make it mm-hmm. okay? Where is that line? And here's the thing, those desires are not of a God, you could say. They are not of they're not in alignment. I'm I'm of the belief that at everybody's core there is a spot of light. Some people it might be just a little yes, bitty, bitty bit. I agree. I agree. But it, it there's a spot of light. And if any of us come into if we make the conscious decision to step into our own power and really tap into ourselves. Now when I say stepping into our power, that doesn't mean going and doing these negative things. That's not power. That's no. actually really, really weak and not not positive at all for ourselves. But when we step into our power, which means that we're confident in ourselves, we're in love with ourselves, we're embracing life, we're in love with life, that we're actually coming into the space where we are aligning to our true self. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of desires come from the ego. A lot of desires come from the mind. And those desires are the things that typically can get us into hot water. But they're also little, you could say, clues toward these desires that are inside. When mm-hmm. you tap in, that's where it's like stillness comes in, prayer, gratitude, meditation, you know, doing those connective practices to self and thus to the divine that's where you come into alignment and those desires that you're really in alignment to, that's where you, you get into even that, the depth of desire because uh-huh. otherwise, I mean, even a cho- piece of chocolate, you could even take a piece of chocolate can be really positive or it, can or it be could really be negative. really, really negative. Cause if you're a, an extreme diabetic, yes. that shouldn't be eating chocolate and you're sitting there just, I want chocolate, I want chocolate, I want chocolate. An alcoholic who desires, you know, a beer. Yeah. That's- These are, so I honestly almost, I don't want to say disagree, but I have, like, I look at desires almost a little bit differently in that a true desire is coming from, a, I believe a true desire is coming from a, a, our spirit self, mm-hmm. our soul, our, and so but if, it's a, if it's a true de- desire, well, 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 you have to tap in. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I haven't finished. <laughs> I think more, I think that it's not a true desire if it's coming from a place of harming ourselves so they don't believe our spirits want to purposely harm us. I don't think we, at our core, will, if we are truly in alignment with our desire and it's a true desire, 
I don't think that, that that desire would be there if it was not good for us. I think then we're getting into wants. Then that, which that's because I'll have clients go, well, what's the difference between a want and a desire? And I think we have lots of wants in our life, which are not aren't necessarily bad. There's a lot of things we we want and they're the same thing we desire. So they are in alignment together. But when I think of desire, I think of from a spiritual, when I think of a want, I think of it more of coming from an ego place. Uh, and so I think any desire is a true desire. However, I think in order to tell, you really do have to tap in to see if it's a it's coming from your ego. And so then it, thus it not being a, an actual desire, it being a, a want, it being, you know, negative energy, negative thought processes coming from that perspective. Uh, but yeah, it's that tapping in first. So. Tapping in to make clear whether it is accurate or not. Yeah. I mean, because it really is, is, does it come from your core? Does it come from your spirit? That's And it can be muddled, I think. From, yes. Absolutely. I think it can be muddled. It can, it doesn't, I mean, I think it's, sit, sitting here, it's easy to go, oh, well, that's not a true desire. This is a true desire. Tap in. But I do think it, it tends to get muddled in our, in our minds and our lives. So. Oh, hey. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Keisha. Hi. So, um, yeah. What, yeah, I saw that you had a John Eldridge quote on it. Uh, the great, so this one is not directly to desire, but it, it spoke to me about desire. The greatest human tragedy is to give up the search. Nothing is of greater importance in the life of our deep, deep heart. To lose heart is to lose everything. When I hear that, I actually think of desire. Because when we're touching into our deepest heart, then we're touching into our desire. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear that, it, it speaks to kind of what I was, was touching on in the very beginning, how uh, if we're not living a life of desire, then then we're losing our heart, we're losing ourselves, we're losing our spirits. Yeah. We, so. are, we are in, indeed dying. And, and that's why I kind of started with, you know, when I was talking about duty and responsibility, because these are the things that we block our heart with is duty and responsibility. And, you know, if you take it down the whole religious path here, if just for a second, a religious Go path, for it. because free I, I spirit. Think we're free to talk about anything we desire. Just because I think that it's really, really important that, you know, because we live in a world where religion is it's a primary focus for a yes. lot of people. It is a major player in, in our lives and that's awesome, wonderful, beautiful. And there's so much beauty behind religion, but there's one little thing that I keep hearing over and over again. And it's just kind of, I don't know. I, maybe it's just really in my face right now, but <laughs> what's in my face right now <laughs> with, with that is that, um, there's so many different faiths out there. You know, it's like, oh, come to my church. Come to my church. Mm -hmm. I want to save you, right? I want to say, and there's that. I don't know. <laughs> that whole thing. It's and creepy. Then, no. And then, but so there's this, and what are we, and then we're like, well, why, why are you going to church? Why are you going to church? Well, I'm going to church because that's where I can connect with God. That's God's house. I go on Sunday. I go on Saturday. Whatever your day yeah. is, right? There's Wednesday church. There's Thursday. There's church every day. But yeah. just picking on whatever day you want. But why are you going? Well, I'm going for this reason. And it's because, you know, I need to connect. I need to tap in. I, I want to make sure that I, you know, that I can ask God for this. I can ask God for that. And then also you look at it as, what comes down at the end is that it is duty almost like I've got to go to church because I want to teach my children the right way. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I stay in alignment and that I don't get tempted. I want to do this. I want to do that. It all comes down to duty. And then a lot of people really, if you ask them, well, are you passionate about God? Are you passionate about, you know, your religion, your faith, your spiritual path? They don't desire God. There, there's no desire there. So, I think, like, especially with that quote right there, since I'm such a big Eldridge fan anyway, yeah. is that when he's talking about, you know, that we're leaving our hearts, what he's saying is that also is that what God really wants is God wants us to desire him. God wants us to desire yes. life. God, And we have turned into a society that 
is scared of passion. You're so scared of passion. And with that, we just mute ourselves down to nothing with all this duty, and we're just going through the motions. And if you relate it back into relationship, which is really, really easy to do, like, yes. because what is our, when, if we desire God, which means we're desiring life, God which means that we're desiring, yeah. right, God's desiring us, we're desiring God, God desires us, God desires us our, to have happiness, abundance, abound, mm -hmm. all this awesome stuff, right? Blessings that pour over. Yes. Everything that we desire so it is going both ways and then if you take that in and you look at like a marriage situation or two people dating or whatever that but an intimate relationship if you have one person that is desiring the other but this person is not desiring that person as much or that much or they're just not putting in the effort the work they're just not really connecting but this person goes oh well let's we're just going to talk about duty sex for just for a second yeah. so it's just like yeah. Because, I mean, this is like, I think going, it, it to, church, goes into, going yeah. to church could be considered spiritual duty, duty sex. sex. <laughs> like, there's there's a blog post. <laughs> there's a blog post. That's tweet. Like, That's a tweet. <laughs> there's a tweet. Going to church could be considered spiritual duty sex if you're not going with the desire for God, with the desire, the passion to really so not go there because... Oh, if I don't show up, then my neighbors and my friends and the guy standing who holds the door and passes out the, you know, thing, they're going to know. And, you know, so-and-so is going to email me or text me. Or even, say, like, God's not going to let me into heaven. God's not going to let me into heaven because I miss church. And, and it's just like, oh, man, i got to go to church today. But you really, here's the thing. God is everywhere. We can tap into God at any given yeah. moment. I have more spiritual conversations with God driving in my car. I don't listen to music. I'm just, I'm just like tapped in, tuned in, and turned on in, in certain people's terms. Like, yeah. Because and it's that passion for, that desire for, that connection, that intimacy with God. But that also comes out. Because that relationship with the divine is so important to me, that also comes out in other relationships. And I'm talking about relationship to life, not just to people. I mean, yes, I have lots of great intimacy relationships. Yes. And intimacy meaning to be very intimate and connected and open, vulnerable, surrendering to the relationship in love not sex that's you know we again we that, use yeah, the word intimacy, intimacy and we say oh i was intimate with that person well i'm intimate with almost everybody all the time <laughs> I was intimate, I just... exactly yeah so that can be perceived as what did i just say i don't have sex with yeah hardly anybody so it's like that could be seen as you're like prostituting yourself all around yeah but that's not the case Maybe. But, but yeah, it's intimacy but to be is not intimate is to be, you know, into me I see yeah. and thus I open up to you. and allow myself to see you if you're willing to allow me to see you. There's intimacy. Yeah. And I think that we can have I mean, we can kind of like a small little rabbit trail, like we can have sex and not have intimacy. Oh heck yeah. And so do it all the time. <laughs> yes. And that is what, I mean, that's the truth is in kind of on your, it's your way. It's the duty. And it's, it's the, the same thing when, when we're, we feel like we are, have a duty to God or do it's the same, same kind of thought process. Um, and, and kind of going off of your passion comment, if a desire doesn't have passion behind it, it's not a, it's not a desire or there's something holding it back. Right. There's fear. Yeah. There's fear. some, you know, it all comes back to fear. Yeah. yeah. Or it's, it's not a true desire. It's something that you think you should desire, but it actually isn't a true desire or it's back to fear. And we do, we, I think we are almost, well, I don't think we are almost <laughs> as scared of our, our joy, our light, our our beauty, our desires, then we are of our the perceived negatives, the the darkness, the so to step into our desire, that is like scary as all get out for a lot of people. Because we live in a world where we're told don't do like that's bad, that's negative, that's sinful. Um I actually don't get too happy. Actually <laughs> 
also, I actually have a Napoleon Hill quote that I actually love. Desire is the starting point of all achievement, not a hope, not a wish, but a keen pulsating desire, which transcends everything. And I mean, that is, when we're talking passion, it is, it's like a pulsating, pulsating like, like you can barely contain yourself because it just feels this, that, that thought, that feeling in your body just fills you up. And then when we bring in fear and we start to leave the depths of our desire, because when we bring in fear, we start to pull ourselves from those depths into the shallows of desire. We lose that beautiful energy. We, we lose the ability to pull and manifest these things into our lives because mm -hmm. we are dwindling that, that beautiful energy we're sending out for our desire. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get back into the shallows is the duty because it's, we're stepping out of here and into here and we're analyzing everything and we're critiquing everything. We're trying to control the outcome because duty really is based in control. So, you know, it, our, why, why do we just, why are we claiming that we desire this? And that, you know, that again will force you back into a deeper state of consciousness, but it comes down to then what the statement like when you said, I think I might disagree and it's not a disagreeing. You're just, took a little bit different spin on it because what we're saying is that in, in order to access, uh, ex, nah, access. <laughs> thank you. Access. <laughs> I'll be your interpreter today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm maxed out everybody. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so maxed out. We had maxed at ancient crystal skull here. So if anybody, that's what I mean by maxed out. Um, but in order to access the depth really does mean that we have to come into this place of connecting to our deep self. Mm -hmm. So our true self, the, the, you know, us inside, not all of these ego, fear, doubt, control, judgment, jealousy, you know, thoughts that we have that cause the monkey mind to, yes. to go around. I think it's also, there's an acceptance because before we can, I mean, you have to accept that it's okay to have these desires. And I know a lot of people are like, no, I accept that I have desires. I'm like, bullshit. That's not true. Most people, even, I mean, there's times that I go like, I can't, I can't accept that. Desire. Like that's a struggle for me to accept that, you know, to go into that. So you have to breathe into it, but there is an acceptance of self that it's okay to have have these desires it is like before you can really reach that depth you have to find an acceptance of self before you can you can do that mm -hmm. uh, before you truly allow yourself to see some of the things you really do desire and then even if it's a desire that you're like oh, kind of uncomfortable with that desire and I, I mean and that could be in any area of your life but but to to see it from a different perspective, maybe even and and just go like, what is it about that desire? I, I what is it about that that I do desire that I do enjoy? You know, and kind of look at it with a different lens instead of uh, the lens that society tends to give a lot of our desires. Um, so, like a desire could be like, I want to run away and spend, you know, a month all by myself on a deserted island. And I do want to do that. I yes. know you yes. do. Yes. I know you do. Yes. I know but you do. I do not. <laughs> that is not a desire of mine. I would love to do that with, like, a friend, but not by myself. That would just be alone. No. No. It's not as fun. It wouldn't be as fun. But... <laughs> Difference make it on an island all by yourself. I would be suntan, happy. I'd bring books with me. Well, yeah, I'd meditate, course. read, pray, swim, eat lots of sushi and pineapple and coconut. It would be awesome. I see, like the desire <laughs> building, but like You're that could a be desire rampage here. Like. Well, if you have, and you have seven children, so I'm sure there would be I'm people. Leaving them. Oh, I know you. Okay, I'm behind. I know, I know, myself. but I'm sure there would be people who go like you. I have seven children. Like, that's not an okay desire for me. I know you're cool with it. I know you're cool with it. There, I know, but think the average, I think there would be a lot of women who would go like, 
I can't have that desire. It's wrong for me to even have that desire. And yes, absolutely. I mean, I did that for 20 years. Yeah. As a mother for 20 years, my first five kids, you know, oh, I said no to myself. I said no to my desires for 20 years. I just would not, I didn't take any personal trips. I didn't, we didn't even really take, you know, like romantic vacations mm -hmm. together, my husband and I. I hardly went and allowed myself even the ability to go and do little things. Like, it took a lot. If I wanted to go get a certification, take a class, whew, that was a major desire for me because, you know, all of the different things that I had out there, the responsibility stepped mm -hmm. in the way of the desire and I felt like I should not do these things. Right down to the fact that me just taking time to exercise. Oh my goodness. What, how dare I want an hour a day to do these things for myself. And that was, it It was, it had to turn into a need. Mm -hmm. Like my body had to actually go into, all right, girl, well, you know, this is what's gonna happen. If you don't pick up the ball on your desire over here, well then we're just gonna do these things to push you on it. Yes. And that I think is a, a point that needs to come up because when we fight against our desires, what in turn happens, and I mean, I can pick on like the whole exercise nutrition aspect because I've lived that one. And I mean, I've lived a lot of them, but that's a really, I think a lot of people can probably grab hold really, of this one, yeah. relate to this one, is that what happens is that, you know, we're like, oh, I'm working too much. I don't have time in the morning to do that. I don't have time and I'm too tired at night to do that. Mm -hmm. My weekends are full of getting caught up on all my other tasks because I don't have time during the week to do this. So there's all these excuses as to why you can't access that desire, why you can't really touch it, right? You're not going to go after it because of all these responsibilities and duties that you have that are going to just come in. You know, I my kids have this, I have this, I have that, I got, I got all this different stuff, right? And then all of a sudden, you fast forward 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, and next thing you know, your body is rebelling against you. And, Which it will. And right? So now you've picked up extra weight. Your metabolism has, has gotten mm -hmm. sluggish. Maybe you have some intestinal disease. Maybe your blood pressure is high. I mean, you're not sleeping as well. This, you know, all these different things, you have these chronic illnesses, diseases, diseases in the body, all because you didn't have time. You didn't have time to take care of yourself over the last fill in the blank years, right? So you avoided your desire to do that because we do get these little like, oh, I should, I really need to do that. I do want to do that. And like what, January 1st, everybody wants to rush off to the gym. Yes. Everybody wants to do this. Mm -hmm. There's like that desire is high and we have that motivation and that push because it's now socially okay to do this. Of course, everybody's doing that. And then life starts to get in the way and the desire gets pushed away. And then it just gets eaten up by everything else. And next thing you know, another year has gone by. And yes. what happens? And then what I would say that almost like we, we dig ourselves into a deeper kind of hole in trying to get to our desires because then we get a lot of doubt and, oh, it never has worked in the past. This hasn't happened. I can't desire that. Because truly, I think, I mean, when you really have a strong desire that, yes, there is this like beauty and this beautiful energy, but it almost, it can almost hurt because it's like, I need, like, I desire this so much. So if you continue to have to, like, bury your, or you're choosing, not have to, but if you're continuing to bury those desires, it's almost painful from a emotional stance to really pull them up. But it's a lot less painful than what's going to happen in the long term because mm -hmm. I can say even from an emotional standpoint I mean I went through years of depression and severe eating disorders which is a mental illness because I wasn't owning my desire I was I was pushing them away I was going into duty I was going it's not okay for me to have desire it's not okay for me to have want and desire desire all of these things in my life um and so really it just drove me, not insane, but insane. Like it, 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 it made me depressed. It made me, I mean, very, very sad because there was so much fear and so much social pressure to not want my desires, to not seek those things out. Uh, and so, so it is a process to kind of dig into those desires and dig and kind of breathe into that. 
and kind of get your ego out of it. Mm -hmm. And if it's, you know, I think it's also being in, because you, you're talking about the pain that comes up with desire. And yes, I mean, I completely can understand it. Multiple desires. And here's the thing that I've learned with that is that sometimes our desires are are too big for us mm -hmm. because we're we haven't done the work that we need to do to be able to receive our desires that doesn't mean that we can't have our desire all that means is that we have work that we need to do to receive it to grow ourselves mm -hmm. right so the way through that that I've really come into like alignment with is coming into alignment with your desire but what does that mean so let's say I'll just take my take off to a, an island all okay, by myself go for, for a month, go right? for it. So, but, so that right now, I was like, whoo, that sounds like, yes, I want to do that. Uh -huh. But there is also this, like, tug in me, of like, oh, man, like, you have a three-year-old, you have a five-year-old, you've got this going on, that going on, and there's almost, like, a little depression, like, I can get mm -hmm. I, excitement, and they're like, whoo, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's yeah. not going to happen. That's just not going to happen, and I have a humongous list as to why it cannot happen. So since that is that says I'm not in alignment to that, doesn't mean that I can't do that, you know. And if I go, oh well, maybe when I'm 70, right? And then my then I kick into, oh, you're going to be too old, and maybe this will happen. So you see, I'm already taking my desire away mm -hmm. from when I'm 70 because I have all this stuff. So to get into alignment with you're going to be blown and going at 70, but keep going. You have the potential to make well. that that month trip happen. Let's say then what I would say is, you know, like doing little trips. What can I get into alignment to? Well, I can get into alignment very, very easily. Very, very easily. Matter of fact, it's already on my calendar. <laughs> very, very easily to four or five days in Cancun. Yeah, I can get very easy. We were just talking about Costa, Costa Rica, Rica, right? I'm like, end of you look year. at my calendar, and I'm like, oh, well, I want to go here, and I want to go there, and, and what? I've already got, like, July. I'm like, bye, see ya. Now, I'm not going yes. all by myself, but I've got two trips planned yes. in July, and that is taking up pretty much the whole month of July. So mm -hmm. these things, to find something at a smaller scale that you can get really turned on to. And that is the key, is turned on to it, which is passionate about it, right? That's all turn on is, it's being passionate about something. You feel it and it gets you excited and you feel positive and you can hold that positive feeling mm -hmm. for a long enough period of time that you can actually buy into it. You can believe it because you have to be able to believe it. Yeah, you have it. to be able to believe it. And then once you, it, it really is that you get into this, you know, you build on that because if from one small trip to the next small trip to the next small trip, all of a sudden the belief level intensifies and this, you end up with a snowball effect. Yes. We tend to snowball in the negative about, Oh, well that's never happened before and this can't happen and blah, 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 blah. So we snowball the negative and it's working the other way. It'll work exactly the same way. If you snowball it the other way, if you allow it to go the other way, which just means that some of those big desires that, are too scary for you to handle right now, shrink it down to something that's not that scary, but still gives you that, whoo, you know, like, wow, I, that's, that's really turning me on. That, so I'm really excited about that. I could see doing that. I could see doing that. Run with that. Run with that. And that will take you into even the deep, which is where, you know, like, I, I really just want to go have, you know, a nice dinner tonight. Or I, I really want that piece of chocolate. Yeah. Or I just want to lay one day out in the sun. <laughs> all by yourself. All by myself. I just want to just be able to read a book. And, and pretend like you're on a deserted island. And just, and just lay there for, like, just th just two hours. Yeah. Right? It can be that small. It, little desires build to bigger desires. So I would, I'm on board with that all completely. And yet I think it also is continuing to push yourself a little bit too, because I think on the other hand of that, we can get into staying in the shallows because it's comfortable. And, and so it is a pushing yourself. You have like to have that. Like continuing to go like, yeah, to you have those. Woo. It was like, <laughs> like I can't believe I'm doing this mm -hmm. to kind of push you forward, though, too. Because if it if it doesn't have that, you can't just say I desire a piece of chocolate. And I go, okay, here you go, and they're like, I'm like, okay, okay yeah, that's thanks, right. thanks. Yeah, no, that's not, that's not. Fair. No, a pushing. So let's kind of silly, but like let's pull on even the chocolate. Like there's chocolate right over there if I wanted it, but I could go like. Or I could drive down to Dallas, and there's that yummy chocolate place Man, that I was just there. 
I was just drove by it almost. Oh, you it's should have thing on chocolate. <laughs> but, you know, I could go like, no, that's really the chocolate <clears throat> I desire. And so kind of pushing myself out to go like, no, I'm going to go get the chocolate that really like makes me feel good and is elegant and luxurious and tastes good and, and is shaped in the little, in the shape of little mushrooms. <laughs> You know, but that is even pushing yourself. It is continuing to push yourself, even though uh, you might not be able to, like you said, live on a deserted island, but it is pushing yourself to get out of your comfort zone and step into those deeper, continue to step into a deeper level of desire and not be okay in this kind of... You step up your desire. You step up your game with each one. But you still have to have that, what I refer to, and people are going to get tired of me telling them this because I do it in all my videos, is the raggedy edge. I always come back to racing terms, right? Mm -hmm. It's the raggedy edge. The raggedy edge is that space where you can get really, really good speed, but you can all, you know, and you can pass people by, but you're also risking you're risking You're out risking. there. So there's that those butterflies that come up inside of you. It, it is a whoo feeling. So you're holding that. And the power of holding that emotion is where, and it's kind of like there's a little adrenaline rush, right? Yeah. It's just that little adrenaline rush that you're looking for. And what happens with that is that that actually provides momentum. It provides the shift. It provi- It's an access point is what it is. It's a true access point because otherwise... We're not going to, if I handed you a piece of chocolate, your gratitude for that piece of chocolate would last like this. You'd be like, thank you, Candle. Thank you for the yeah. chocolate. And then we like, would carry on. It would be no big deal. Now, if I went, oh, hey, you know. Let's I'm go down this. to see it. Right. Okay. If we go off of this and I tell her, okay, you know what? I'm canceling my date. We're having a girl's date instead. And or we're going to chocolate. chocolate secrets. I'm that gonna have that. Would be like that. That she would probably be going tomorrow. <laughs> you would text me tomorrow. I, I know you. You would text me tomorrow, Mario. You'd be like, yeah. you didn't have to do that. That was Thank so nice. That was so Thank you so much. It really meant a bunch. Right. And right. Right. Because there's a, it does. There, it is like the raggedy edge. Mm-hmm. It is in your terms, and, and it is digging deeper into that desire. So yeah. And for who I have a date with later, I'm not canceling the date. Okay. Just in case you're watching, I don't think they are. But okay. they're not watching. <laughs> It was a <laughs> example. Sorry, I love you, but I'm not kidding. It's fine. Because <laughs> you have a desire to go on a very quiet date. <laughs> so, so yeah, I just challenge everybody, all our listeners, to really just step step into their your desire today. Don't wait. Go like, oh, next weekend maybe I'll go do something. No, do something today to step a little bit deeper into your desires. Uh, Again, not something crazy, but just if you want to go crazy, go for it. But just to kind of push yourself into your desires. And I suggest doing, taking like 15 minutes and doing like a desire inventory and really just writing like I desire and go crazy. Let it all kind of flow out. It all doesn't, you don't have to make sure that every single thing is in perfect alignment with you. Just like, you said well, the deserted you island, you, we threw it out there and you went, what you can do is you can do like that desire inventory. And I, I do this frequently because I'm always popping off desires. Yeah. But so those, when you're doing the desire inventory, one thing that you can do is that you just get writing and just allow yourself basically to brainstorm, right? You're just brainstorming your desires. And then all, then after you're done with that, come back and feel into each one of those desires. So then, and then you can rank them on a scale of one to 10. That's pretty easy to do. Like one, you know, I, I don't know if I can really like, like me taking a vacation for a whole month all by myself. All right. So that would be a one. Okay. That's, that's a one in my book right now, but me going to Cancun for five days, I, that's an eight, nine, possibly even a 10. I'm, I'd rank it like a nine, nine and a half actually. So that if you go through and you rank each one like that with 10, where is your, des- that's a strong desire and it is also a strong belief that you can have it. So if you look at it like that, those, those seven to nine is going to be really easy to create in your life. The 10 you are like dead on is probably going to show up at your door before I'm done talking, that kind of thing. And one to, to six in there, you've got challenges because 
your belief level is not there. You're not fully in alignment mm -hmm. to it. There's these things that are holding you back, and that's okay because those things are going to readjust the next time you do it, and the next time you do it, and the next time you do it. But just to see where you're at. So doing a desire inventory list and then ranking them one to ten like that will help you to see exactly where you're at and what you have the potential of creating Mm -hmm. today, tomorrow, like in the very near future, so that you're not setting yourself up for for pain, for suffering, because what we tend to do is like, you know, if I say, oh, I'm going to go win the lottery tonight, and then I, but I've never even played the lottery, or I've played the lottery every single, or whatever, I don't play the lottery at all, but, <laughs> but you know, and, and I say I'm going to do this, but I've never won a thing in my life, my, my belief gonna level is going to be pretty much nothing. So the chances of me winning the lottery may nothing was nothing, right? Yes. So I'm at zero to one down here because my belief level is zero to one. Where if I said, I'm going to go have a really great glass of wine at this really cute restaurant that I love. And that's what I'm going to go do tonight. And I'm really desiring that because I'm looking forward to blah, 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 blah. I can really tap into that. My belief level in that happening is a 10. So, of course, this is going to happen and that. And, yes, I mean, granted, we would all love to win the lottery or have yeah. something like that happen, right? But where are you at on that level and really getting into that? Because that's – alignment is everything. Alignment is absolutely everything. Yes. So, well, there we go. I, I feel complete. <laughs> so, uh, I appreciate you all joining us. Um, we will be doing this, I think, again on the 18th of March. I think that's what uh, is on the calendar for for now. And so keep uh, keep checking our page for what the topic's going to be and if we're going to have any guests coming on next time. Uh, uh, just a quick promo. We have a women's retreat coming up uh, in June 22nd through the 24th. Uh, so check out uh, hearmeroarretreats.com. Uh, and we can throw it in the comments for anybody interested. Uh, so check that out. That's going to be an awesome event. Um, and then we have our oral intimacy class also coming up on March 17th. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be an awesome, it's always an awesome class. It's always fun. Um, and so please join us so you can check that out on either of our calendars um, and get registered for that because that is going to be just that's going to be a fun, high, playful class. So yes, check all that out. And we will see you guys in two weeks um, for our next little little chat. Yes. So um, have a fantastic Sunday, everybody. You too. You all do that. All right.